It's from the part of the National Climate Assessment, which went out to journalists and policymakers. This page contains a lot of graphics. Here's one which shows heat waves increasing since 1960. Here's another one which shows Arctic sea ice declining since 1979. And another one which shows wildfires increasing since 1983. And one more which shows sea level rising since 1920. So we have one graph which starts in 1960, another which starts in 1979, another which starts in 1920, and one more which starts in 1983. When you want to mislead people with statistics, picking your start date is very important. First, let's look at the heat wave graph which starts in 1960. They carefully picked a period during the global cooling scare to start their graph so that they could show heat waves increasing over time. And here's the underlying data from the part of the National Climate Assessment which didn't go out to journalists and politicians. This graph is warm spells days, this one is heat wave magnitude, and this one is warmest temperature of the year. As you can see, summers were much hotter in the United States prior to 1960. So by hiding all the data before 1960, they were able to show a little bit of an upwards trend. I overlaid the part of the graph which went out to policymakers over here in this corner on top of the underlying data, and you can see exactly what they did. The red bars are what policymakers saw, and the extreme heat prior to 1960 is what they didn't see. People may consider this sort of behavior to be shocking, but it's actually standard operating procedure for climate alarmists. This graph shows in pink all the data that was hidden from journalists and policy makers. This next graph is the one which shows wildfires increasing in the U.S. since 1983. And this graph of U.S. forest fires from the U.S. Forest Service is the one which didn't go out to journalists and politicians. And you can see why they hid all the data before 1983, because there was a lot more burn acreage in the United States prior to 1983. Burn acreage in the U.S. is down about 80% since the 1930s. This shouldn't be surprising to anyone because it was very hot and dry during the 1930s. Fires are associated with heat and droughts. So there's very close correlation between heat waves and burn acreage. This next graphic overlays the graph which went out to journalists and policymakers over here on top of the data which didn't go out to journalists and policymakers. You can see the breathtaking fraud which is going on here. They carefully cherry-picked one year where they could show an increasing trend in wildfires, even though U.S. wildfires are down 80%. And this graph shows in pink all the data that was hidden. Now let's look at the Arctic sea ice extent graph, which starts in 1979. Starting in 1979 makes it look like sea ice extent is decreasing linearly. And now let's look at the data which is being hidden. This graph is from the 1990 Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change report. It shows Arctic sea ice extent all the way back to the early 1970s. And as you can see, extent was much lower prior to 1979. And 1979 was the peak. The data was taken from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. And here's the accompanying text from the 1990 IPCC report. Satellite observations have been used to map sea ice extent routinely since the early 1970s. The American Navy Joint Ice Center has produced weekly charts which have been digitized by NOAA. And down here is the key sentence. In 1972 to 1975, sea ice extent was significantly less. So they hit the data before 1979 and tried to use the excuse that we didn't have satellite data prior to 1979. But the IPCC report said the exact opposite. Satellite observations have been used to map sea ice extent routinely since the early 1970s. This shouldn't surprise anyone because we went to the moon in 1969. We actually have satellite data from earlier than that. This is from the February 1965 issue of National Geographic. It's a satellite photo of Arctic sea ice looking down on the North Pole. It's pretty clear why the National Climate Assessment is hiding all the pre-1979 data, because it would rack their linear downwards trend line. Here's one more graphic showing U.S. sea level rising over the past century, as if sea level around the U.S. could somehow be different than it is in the rest of the world. So now let's look at what they're hiding. Sea level has been rising at the same rate for thousands of years. 
This graph from NOAA is made from data from the tide gauge of Lower Manhattan. It shows that sea level has been rising at a steady rate since the middle of the 19th century. Abraham Lincoln, 2.84 millimeters per year. Teddy Roosevelt, 